Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and in this episode of our Chromatic Craft tutorial series, we're going to take a look at the ritual table. So, I've spent the last, I think, what, maybe an hour uh, and a half, uh, going around the landscape, connecting all the pylons that I need, every single one, um, using multi-auras to go out to the regions that have a ton of pylons around them, and then uh, using uh, either just brushing past them to get to more or using the uh, little ones to connect to the multi auras. I now have every single one. Uh, I placed down this storage crystal charger in order because it draws pylon energy, it draws all of them, to see when I connected them all. And as we can see, we have all of them, including Argia. We got all the energies. Um, and I've got like, we've got multi auras ringing the base. Uh, so that we can get that energy to um, all four sides of our casting uh, complex. Although, it would be funnily enough, it, all you'd have to do is have a multi aura like high enough above the center of the table, and it, it could beam down to all of them, and that would look awesome. I'll have to try that out later. Uh, but anyway, now that we have all the powers, uh, we can go ahead and use the ritual table. You don't need all of them in order to use the ritual table, but. The different rituals do require a fairly broad mix um, of the different, you know, pylon colors, so you may as well, right? So let's just clear out our inventory a little bit because this is something I should have done uh, off camera but didn't because I'm a noob. And we'll take a look at, if we scroll all the way to the bottom, to structures, we scroll over to charging, we'll find the ritual altar right here. So we can click this. And it's a fairly large structure. It uses a lot of blocks. Um, it's not that difficult at all. It's just a pyramid. So you need a, you're going to need 161 crystal and stone, which is not hard to get. You know, you just got to get some crystal shards to make enough of these. Um, eight buckets of liquid chroma, the actual ritual table, 48 stone beams, four columns, four engraved stone, and eight embossed stone. It's important not to mix these two up. That's a very uh, common way to screw up your multi-block. It's by uh, flipping those. So we've got that. We got the beams. We got our stone columns, which are still decorated for the holidays. We've got our engraved stone and our embossed stone. And what else did we say? Ah, darn it! I forgot to push the button. Uh, I always keep forgetting to press the little bookmark button when I uh, quit this book. Beams, columns, engraved, embossed, standard stone, liquid chroma, and the ritual itself. So, uh, to craft yourself a ritual table, now that I have everything I need, we need to craft ourselves a ritual table. The ritual table is crafted very simply. Five uh, cobblestone, three of any crystal shards, and one energetic essence, which if you remember comes from something called resonant clover, which is a plant that you need to find. So let's go ahead and grab that stuff. Do -do -do. Doesn't matter what color shard we use. Scroll down, find ourselves the energetic essence. Then all we need is some cobblestone. All right, throw all of this in here. Doop do doop. Ritual table, standard, standard casting recipe. Doesn't take very long at all. We have ourselves now, well, two ritual tables. Now we just need to uh, site. Um, you know, a location for it. It's uh, going to be 11 by 11, right? So just make sure you find an area uh, in your, you know, that you can uh, put it where it'll have access to the various, uh, you know, crystal energies, place where it'll be easily accessible. You know, just right here is probably the best location. So we'll site the center of it. Oops, maybe like right here. Now it's important to note that on the bottom level of the structure, there's actually nothing in the middle, right? So we'll get to this structure now. So this is the bottom layer. Uh, is, is the, nothing in the middle. You just need one, two, three, four, five in each direction and to fill the whole thing in, all right? So I'll go ahead and do that. Basically, I just need to frame this up. Now I can get rid of the center. And you go two, three, four, five in each direction. Three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. 
two, three, four, five. And then you just need to fill this whole thing in. What am I doing that for? Where is a builder's wand? Do I have a builder's wand in this pack? Yes, I do. Super builder wand. No, don't get rid of that. I need that later. Super Builder's Wand, or the Construction Star, makes the building of these sorts of things very quick. And this is the primary reason why you need so much crystal and stone for this. Because the base is pretty big. Okay, so we can go up a layer. And that goes in by one layer. This is where we place a, a block over the center. And then we surround that with liquid chroma, surround that with more crystal and stone. So, all right, we'll go ahead and do that next. So what we need to do is create a, like a little well here in the middle with crystal and stone. So draw a border around this center three by three area out of crystal and stone. Then go ahead and place a block of crystal and stone right over that, uh, you know, that center hole so that you have this donut, this ring. This is what we're gonna fill with liquid chroma. So if I just go, is it in items or tools? I think it's in tools. Liquid chroma bucket. Now it's important that when you're doing stuff with liquid chroma for multi-blocks, that you need to have a source block of it on every single square. If you don't, it isn't gonna work. That was the problem I was having with the infusion ring. It was hard to tell that there wasn't a source block of liquid chroma on every single square so that the infusion ring wasn't working. So we've got our liquid chroma in the center. So now what we need to do is extend this ring out by one block and then we need to surround that with uh, beams. So all we have to do is just build this out again so that it's two blocks thick. Oh, I just noticed a problem with the with our multi-block. We are missing block. All right, so we see that this is two blocks thick now. So now we need to place the embossed stone on the corners and then run beams between them. So we'll grab the embossed crystalline stone, not the engraved. Get out of here, tree. You bother me. Embossed crystalline stone on each corner of this. So right there. Grab ourselves the stone beams. And fill in between them. Pretty straightforward. Alright. This is what we have so far. Let's keep going. So if we go up another layer. This is where we place the actual ritual table. So we'll go ahead and do that. Ritual table goes right on the little plinth, right in the center of our liquid chroma moat. Now what we need to do, let's go back down to see. It goes in one more block with this whole crystalline stone embossed stone thing. All right? So take your embossed crystalline stone and just bring it in one block diagonally from the other block embossed. Of course, we're up a level now. Nope, right there. And right there. And then we connect those together with beams as well. So we want crystalline stone beams between each of these. Making our little ring. Okay, but we're not done on this level yet. We gotta place columns in the corners. So we grab our stone columns. Those go right here. And if we go up again, this is where we place our engraved stone. So the engraved crystalline stone goes on top of the little columns. And now we can use the 3D view to check our, pro our block and make sure that it matches our multi-block. And I do believe that it does. I just want to punch the way the rest of these leaves. When it comes to the Chromaticraft multi-blocks, or pretty much any multi-block, you want to make sure that there aren't any foreign blocks anywhere within a cube. Like, if you drew a bounding box around this whole thing, you don't want there to be any foreign blocks in there. So, you don't want to have any other blocks of any kind 
between like this and and this so that whole area in there needs to just be empty space so that it can accurately tell that it's the multi-block now the ritual table draws its power if you look at the little if you look at the little icon draws power directly from the uh, crystal network so we have ourselves uh, a lovely little uh, multi aura repeater right here and I'm hoping that this multi aura repeater that, that the ritual table can get to it otherwise it might be blocked by the um, embossed crystal and stone right there but we'll see we'll see if it's able to reach yep it is it's able to reach uh, both of those repeaters so we're good okay so that's that's our multi-block built uh, for the ritual table now we need to choose what rituals we want to do so uh, if we right click on the table there's going to be uh, a number of, of rituals that you're going to be able to page through okay click these uh, buttons on the side you can you can page through all these rituals a lot of them are they're, they're either higher or lower level and uh, they're gonna take more or less um, power the ones that I want to talk about right now however ooh, it's all like cool and, and lit up and stuff now it doesn't always do that does it ritual table no it doesn't so, okay, that's a good way of telling if your ritual table is, uh, I think, is, is functional. It's got, it's got this purple glow on top, and it's got these blue, cool, light-up lines on the, on the sides. Neat. Okay, so I want to talk about a couple different rituals in this episode. There's a lot of rituals, like a lot of them, and we're not going to be able to demonstrate them all in, like, this one video. So we're going to go over these first four. Energy and elements. These are the lowest tier, um... Uh, of, of rituals, so you're going to be able to get these first. And the first and most useful is Pylon Surge Protection. So if I page through here, it'd be cool if you could search uh, for the one that you want. But like, press the first letter or something. Help it. Pylon Surge Protection. This is the one that you're going to want to get first. Uh, the reason that, that you build the ritual table uh, to get is to get all these buffs, but the first one you want is this. This is the one that prevents you from getting shot by pylons, okay? As long as you have this ritual active, pylons won't shoot you, which is awesome when you're messing around with them. Uh, necessary if you're going to do stuff like place uh, crystal, power crystals on them or do things like turbocharging and just really helpful when uh, manipulating your network. So click on the picture, then right click it with your elemental manipulator. That will start the charging process. It doesn't seem to be getting any power. Can it actually communicate with these? It says it can, but it doesn't appear to be getting power. Like, let's lift it up a bit. There we go. So that was the problem. So when you've got your repeaters your multi aura repeaters, however, you know, plugging into this table, make sure that the repeater is quite a bit higher up than the actual table. Because what was happening over here is that the beams were probably being blocked by the corners. So, now that it's fully charged, if we look at it with this, we can see that the light has turned green, the little dot, and now we've got the, uh, the, the colors sort of uh, swirling around on it. All we have to do is jump in the middle. Do I have an empty slot in my inventory? No. But it goes into this nifty little animation where you're hovering. It goes into third person. You're, you're hovering in the air and uh, you float around. The music is really soothing. If you've watched the uh, our Revolution 3 series, there's an episode where, uh, where I, I use the ritual table. It's just very calming and I like it. This does take a little while. <laughs> and it's not like an instant process. If you like things to be instant, I don't know why you're playing Chromatic Craft, because as anyone who plays it knows, it takes an investment of time. There we go. Alright, so, once the ritual table has finished spinning you around, and you have the, uh, the ritual, uh, in order to turn it on, you first need to make sure you have the right amount of power charged up uh, in your body. 
So uh, if we go into the chromic lexicon and we scroll back down to the ritual itself, in this case, pylon surge protection, we can see that it takes um, red, yellow, and black. All right, so Karma, Katrino, and Kuro. In order to turn this ritual on on yourself, you have to have those, uh, you have to have that on you. So if you look at my little pie chart, in the upper left. It's hard to tell whether you have Kuro or not, but I do have the red, yellow, and the black. So now if I press, well, in this case, it's it defaults to the middle mouse button. Um, if, if it's not that for you, you're going to want to go into your options, into your um, controls, and you're going to need to find the uh, the control for that. So if it's it seems to be or uh, seems to be organized by by mod at this point. So I don't know. You have to find the control for it and uh, and 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 set it. So if I press my middle mouse button, I get this list of rich of powers. Some of them have a number. Uh, these are like um, one, like the number of uses that uses that you can uh, store up before you have to give it back to yourself, dump on the table again. I assume. I don't know. Uh, some of these have pretty large numbers. Some of them have pretty small numbers. Some of them are are just passive buffs like they don't have a number in this case we have pylon surge protection right here if i press spacebar or maybe enter or any key you can see now on the right hand side that i've got this little icon for pylon surge protection and uh, it's got the yellow red and black pylon uh, energy lumen energy symbols on it um, now i'm gonna assume that having this active and uh, i don't know if this drains your like the power continuously or if when you're in range of a pylon and the pylon decides that it's going to shoot you that pylon switch protection drains power then i'm not really sure how this works when or if the pylon surge protection actually drains this energy i assume that it does but i'm in survival mode i can stand around this pylon all day it's not going to attack me uh, because i have pylon surge protection and then if I'm not going to be around pylons, I can just go back in here, hit space on it, and turn it off. Pretty cool. Now, let's take a look at another one. If I scroll down here, we have um, Health Leech. Now, Health Leech requires uh, the uh, pinkish magenta one and Resolva, which is the pink one. And I don't think I actually have either of those energies uh, stored up, so I'm going to have to go and grab some of that. Okay, so I am back at the base. I've grabbed the uh, power. I've already jumped on the ritual table for this one. So if I just scroll over to Life Leech, I can activate it. So what this is going to do, this particular one, is... Let's see. Okay, I've got Smite 5 on this, but I don't have anything that's going to give me um, give me health. What I want to do now is I actually want to go into this and go up here and then go into Game Mode 0 so I can fall and take some damage. So now that I've taken some damage, I just need to find something to uh, to whack with Life Leech turned on. There's a pig over here. I assume that this will work. I don't know why, but... So I have a Resolva Pylon over there, and this is a very short run of uh, repeaters that go over from that direction, but for some reason it's jumping all the way over here and coming all the way over here. So it's taking the longest possible route and so the signal attenuates like crazy. So now if I whack this pig, I get a little bit of health back. So it looks like I'm getting about half a heart back for every time I hit it. I don't know if it's, if it's determined on the damage or just every time I punch it, I hit it. Okay, so I didn't get any health for, for, uh, for punching the pig. So I don't seem to be getting any health for punching it. But if I use a sword, I get half a heart. So yeah, this uh, life leech, it'll keep you alive a little bit. When you're doing a lot of fighting, it'll help you just regen some health while whacking enemies. But it looks like you do need a sword. Um, punching it. Either it's based on the damage that you deal, and punching it doesn't deal enough damage in, uh, per hit to trigger it. Or, I'm not really sure how that works. But, there you go. That's life leech. So we'll take a look at the other two here. Uh, Water strider. Uh, which requires Glazio, um, Asvesti, and Kuro. It's pretty obvious what that one does. Um, do I have those? Nope. Let's go get them. Alright, so, if I now go and find Water Strider, 
I can activate it. Now, I should be able to walk on water. Hmm. You have to sprint across it. That is awesome. Haha, <laughs> it's really quick too. So if you just walk. Oh wait, no, it, it worked. You can still step into it, but if you start sprinting. Okay, so if you ever if you stop, you fall in, which makes perfect sense to me. If you just walk in, it doesn't work. But if you go quick enough and you sprint. You can sprint right across it. That is awesome. I love it. So that's Water Strider. <laughs> I love it. That's so good. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the episode where we uh, took a look at the ritual table as well as uh, several of the uh, early game rituals. So uh, in future episodes, um, we'll go through and we'll, we'll test out more of the rituals. And uh, that's, we should be able to get through a good amount of them if that's all we're talking about. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out.